Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we'll be learning how to calculate the matrix exponential. And in particular, at the end of this video, you'll be able to calculate this e power right here, e to the power of this specific matrix. And it turns out that this is very straightforward to do, since you only need to know how to add and multiply matrices. And if you can do that, you can calculate the matrix exponential. Now, why would you want to do this? I hear you ask. Well, calculating the matrix exponential is actually a central mathematical tool in quantum mechanics. And therefore, if you want to understand quantum mechanics, you better know how to take the matrix exponential. We know, of course, what the exponential of a real number is. e to the power of x is simply a function which takes in a number x and spits out another number. We even know how to take the exponential of a function of x, for example, e to the power of minus x squared, where minus x squared is simply another function in x. And this entire e power is in its own again a function. Simply plug in a number and you will receive a number back. And for matrices in particular, we know how to multiply them and therefore we also know how to calculate basic powers of a matrix A. For example, a squared is simply a multiplied with a, a cubed is a multiplied with a, multiplied with a, and so on. So knowing these two fields in mathematics separately, how do we now combine them in order to calculate e to the power of a matrix? And that's what we'll turn to next by solving an exercise step by step where I explain everything I do along the way. So let's do some calculations. And in order not to overcomplicate things, let's start with a 2 by 2 matrix. A is equal to minus 1, 8, 7 and 2. And what we want to calculate now is e to the power of this matrix. So we simply put this matrix in the exponent, minus 1, 8, 7 and 2. And alternatively, you might see this written in the following way. Simply exp or exponent, open a curly bracket then write your matrix, so minus 1, 8, 7 and 2, close the matrix and close the curly bracket. And this letter notation is of course to avoid writing this entire matrix as a superscript in the exponent. So let's now see how we actually calculate this thing. And the only piece of information you need in order to calculate this is that you have to take the Taylor series of the e power. And the idea behind the Taylor series is to write the function, in this case e to the power of x, as a sum of powers of x. So we have 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the power of 3 plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the power of 4 and of course by now you get the general scheme. And we can write this in a more compact form using the sigma notation. We sum over the index k with x to the power of k in the enumerator and k factorial in the denominator. All right, so now we have written e to the power of x as a sum of powers of x. And the crucial point here is that x is not constrained to being a real number. It can also be, you guessed it, a matrix. So let's see what this becomes. If we have e to the power of a, where a is a two by two matrix or any matrix really, then we can write this as the following. We have one, which becomes the unity matrix, which in our case will be the matrix one, zero, zero, one, the unity two by two matrix. We add to this simply a, which corresponds to this x right here, but now a again is a matrix. Then we add 1 over 2 factorial a squared. And we know, of course, how to take the square of a matrix. It's just a basic matrix multiplication. We add to this 1 over 3 factorial a cubed plus 1 over 4 factorial a to the power of 4 and so on and so on. And now you can see that in this simple way, we've written the matrix exponential e to the power of a simply as a sum of matrix multiplications. So a to the power of 2, a to the power of 3, a to the power of 4, and so on and so on. So the only thing that we need is to be able to multiply matrices and add 
matrices. So let's see how this now works out for our specific exercise. We had e to the power of the following matrix, minus 1, 8, 7, and 2. And now we will rewrite this using the Taylor expansion. So we have 1, the 2 by 2 unity matrix. We have A, which is of course simply our matrix, so minus 1, 8, 7, and 2. Then we add to this 1 over 2 factorial, which is, well, simply 1 over 2, because 2 factorial is 2, minus 1, 8, 7, 2, to the power of 2, and plus, and so on, and so on. So this will simply be equal to, now rewriting our unity matrix in full, plus simply our matrix, so minus 1, 8, 7, and 2, plus 1 over 2 factorial, multiply it with, and now we rewrite this matrix squared as the multiplication of two matrices, namely the matrix with itself, so minus 1, 8, 7, and 2, plus all of the other terms. And let's now simply do this matrix multiplication. So we have, again, copying the unity matrix, plus our matrix to the power of 1, but that's simply our matrix again, plus 1 over 2 multiplied with the multiplication of these two matrices. And if you're not sure about how to multiply matrices, I gladly refer you to a video where we solve exercises specifically on multiplying matrices step by step. So let's see what we have here. So for our first element, we have these two numbers multiplied and we add to that these two numbers multiplied. And this gives us 57. For the second element, we get 8. For the third element, we get 7. And for the fourth element, we get 60. And we, of course, add to this all of the remaining terms, where we have to cube the same matrix and so on and so on. And now comes a step where we add all of these matrices together. So for the first element, we have 1 minus 1 plus 57 divided by 2, which of course gives us 57 divided by 2. For the second element, we have 0 plus 8 plus 4, because we have to multiply this 8 by this 1 half in front, and this of course gives us 12. Then we have 0 plus 7 plus 3.5, which gives us 10.5. And then the last element, we have 1 plus 2 plus 60 divided by 2, which is 30, so we get the last element, 32. And this matrix needs, of course, to be added with all of the other matrices that you have. And, well, this is exactly an infinite number of matrices that you need to add. But since most of the time this is infeasible to do, you can simply put this wiggly sign above the equality sign to show that e to the power of this matrix is approximately equal to this matrix right here. And it's of course important to address that we only get an approximate result here, which could be experienced as quite unsatisfactory. However, by using this general approach, this will oftentimes be the outcome and you cannot do anything further. However, sometimes for very specific matrices A, you have the fact that A squared is equal to A to the power of 4, A to the power of 6, and in general that all of the even powers of A are equal to each other. And likewise, you will have that all of the odd powers of A are also equal to each other. And this will make it so that all of these other terms can be collapsed towards just a handful of matrices, and in that case you might be able to get a closed form solution without needing to get this approximation. However, for the majority of matrices, this property will not be true, and therefore it's good to know that most of the time you will indeed get an approximate result. However, if you really do not want to settle for an approximate answer, then there is one more trick that you can do. And this trick builds around the fact that this matrix exponential becomes very simplified for diagonal matrices. We have the property that if A is diagonal, and let's take for instance a diagonal 2 by 2 matrix with elements 
alpha 0 0 beta that we have that e to the power of a so the matrix exponential simplifies to the following e to the power of alpha for the first element 0 0 and e to the power of beta for the fourth element and we see in this case that the exponential of this matrix is simply transferred to the diagonal elements of this matrix, lifting each of the diagonal elements to the exponent. Now, just to stress here and to make sure that you don't make any mistakes, is that this is only valid for diagonal matrices. If you do this for non-diagonal matrices, then you will make a mistake and the result will not be correct. Now, you might of course object that not all matrices are diagonal. However, there is a procedure that you can do to make matrices diagonal and this is called matrix diagonalization and it is actually a central mathematical process that is done in quantum mechanical calculations. And to end off let's prove this property for diagonal matrices as an added practice exercise of this Taylor expansion method. So we have that e to the power of a is equal to the unity matrix plus a plus 1 over 2 factorial a squared plus 1 over 3 factorial a to the power of 3 plus all of the other terms. Writing down the matrices we find for this first one 1 0 0 1 plus the diagonal matrix alpha 0 0 beta and alpha and beta can be any number you like plus 1 over 2 factorial times this matrix squared so alpha 0 0 beta squared plus 1 over 3 factorial multiplied by alpha 0 0 beta to the power of 3 and so on for all of the other terms. So let's now do these matrix multiplications and see what we exactly get. So we have of course still this first matrix 1 0 0 1 plus we still have our original matrix alpha 0 0 beta plus 1 over 2 and then we multiply these two matrices together by doing a matrix multiplication of course. So we have alpha 0 0 beta for the second matrix. And then for the third one we have 1 divided by 3 factorial of alpha 0 0 beta squared multiplied by alpha 0 0 beta. And of course we do not forget all of these other terms. And so let's now do this matrix multiplication after we have copied these matrices right here. So alpha 0, 0, beta plus 1 half divided by, well, multiplying these matrices, we have alpha squared plus 0. So for the first element, we simply have alpha squared. For the second element, we have alpha times 0 plus 0 times beta. Well, this is, of course, 0. Same for the third element. And for the fourth element, we have 0 times 0 plus beta times beta, which is, of course, beta squared. And we see that this matrix squared is simply the square of its elements, and which is a property that only holds for diagonal matrices. Using this, we can now write down this third power, because we know that the square of our original matrix is simply the square of its elements. We have alpha squared, 0, 0, beta squared. And we multiply this with our matrix alpha 0, 0, beta. And we add all of the other terms. Now if we do this multiplication we again get alpha squared times alpha plus 0, which is of course alpha cubed. For the second element we have alpha squared times 0 plus 0 times beta, which is 0. The same is true for the third element. For the fourth element we have 0 multiplied by 0 plus beta squared multiplied by beta, which is of course beta cubed. So we can already remove this one right here and these powers here get lifted by one. So we have three and three and all of the other terms, of course. And this pattern that each time the power of this matrix drops down to the elements of this matrix will be true for any power. So if we then do the step where we add all of these matrices together, we get the following very large matrix. We get 1 plus alpha plus 1 over 2 alpha squared, which is of course this term, plus 1 over 3 factorial alpha to the power of 3, which is this term, 
plus all of the remaining terms which are all in the same fashion. For the upper right element we simply have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus all of zeros which is of course 0. Same for the lower left element which is also simply adding zeros. And then for the fourth element we have of course all of these right here. So we can get again 1 plus beta plus 1 over 2 beta squared plus 1 over 3 factorial beta cubed plus and so on and so on. And what we see now is that for these diagonal elements we actually have the identical series that we had right here but now simply with the elements alpha and beta and this is exactly the Taylor expansion of the exponential. So we can rewrite this matrix as follows e to the power of alpha 0 0 e to the power of beta and there we go we have proven our property that for diagonal matrices the matrix exponential actually reduces to taking the exponential of the diagonal elements. And this already brings us to the end of this video and I hope that you're now more familiar with how to calculate the matrix exponential and that you do not find it so scary anymore. If you learned something give this video a thumbs up and if you want to get notified by future releases for example videos on quantum mechanics where you actually use this matrix exponential then consider subscribing. And with that I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.